This is Michael Sanato with the Real News Network, and I have with us uh, former New York congressional candidate Zephyr Teachout. Um, Ms. Teachout, thank you for uh, agreeing to interview with us. So, so can you uh, start off by telling us a little bit of a background on the lawsuits you're involved with with Crew, and uh, you know what updates you can provide us with? Great. Um, I am one of the lawyers on a lawsuit representing Crew, and then uh, which is a watchdog group in Washington D.C. Um, sussing out ethics violations and um, and then several other uh, plaintiffs who are in the hospitality industry suing Donald Trump for violating a key provision of the uh, of the Constitution the emoluments clause and the foreign emoluments clause and then another emoluments provision in the presidential compensations clause um, we brought the suit uh, in January um, and actually the government replied on Friday June 9th so we just got the government's reply, um, and uh, we'll, we will be putting forward our own briefing and reply to that uh, fairly soon. And um, running in New York um, in uh, that against um, what is traditionally a Republican district, um, you know, what were some of the challenges you faced? And uh, I know in previous interviews you said that the, the Democratic Party uh, leadership is really pushing you to be uh, anti-Trump. So what advice could you give to other progressives running for office? Well, just to be clear, I am anti-Trump. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, you know, I was in a district that uh, went from 6% uh, where Obama won by 6% to where Trump won by about 10. So it's a huge, huge, uh, but nine, nine points. There's a huge, huge flip in that district. And um, uh, I got to be honest, uh, I was both deeply shocked and deeply not shocked. I was deeply shocked because I, uh, I thought we were a lot closer. I thought on the national level we were a lot closer. And then the not shocked part is that people were just so stinking mad. You know, just like ready for something different. Um, I have a lot of advice for people who are thinking about running for Congress. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I'm proud of the fact that uh, we ran a good race. We slightly outperformed Hillary Clinton's. We, show, we showed that our message could resonate more deeply in some um, uh, throughout the district. Um, and then also we were really tagged by the super PACs. Robert Mercer, who's famous for his close connection with Donald Trump, in fact, probably his biggest funder. Um, our congressional race was the race he spent the most money in, uh, as far as we can tell, but uh, well over $500,000. So I don't mind being a target of the super PACs, but they, they, they can hurt you. And, um, you know, if I were to uh, say things that I wish I'd done differently, I wish we'd done, you know, focused even more on organizing. We did a lot of organizing, more on organizing, more on the grassroots. Um, that's absolutely essential. And, and, and to your Trump question, I think the key was um, you got to be representing your district. You know, of course, I, I think Donald Trump's unfit to be president. And I always have, and I'm not ashamed to say that, and I wasn't ashamed to say that then. But what people in the district really want to know is, like, what you're going to do for them. Uh, one of the messages that really resonated is people are like, yeah, small businesses are getting screwed. And we actually end up talking a lot about them. You know, small businesses and how they have been just crushed by the by Wall Street and by big business. And what do you take? It, what do you think it's going to take to defeat John Faso in 2018? Well, John Faso is doing a pretty good job showing who he is. He's shown that he'll lie, showing that he uh, will hide from voters, won't hold, hold town halls, be disrespectful uh, to uh, the women Congress, uh, uh, female members of Congress. Um, so he's doing his own, he's digging his own grave. Um, I think the key uh, across the country, including in the 19th Congressional District, is not just being against, but also talking about how we're in this revolutionary moment and uh, we have an opportunity to, with the political energy we have now, really do something about um, the, the just huge problems of legal corruption in our society and of these big companies that are, are taking over, dominating, paying bad wages and uh, treating their customers badly too. And how do you think the, the Democratic Party and progressives in particular can push Democrats to, to weed out corruption uh, within party ranks? Um, you know, even just a few weeks ago, we had a uh, former Congressman Kareem Brown uh, be convicted of charity fraud. Last year, we had Congressman uh, Shaka Fatah convicted. Uh, you know, even in New York, we had the, the state assembly speaker and uh, 
I'm stay. Just gotta, you got plenty <laughs> going on. Yeah. Well, how do you work to, to purge this corruption, not only within the Dem uh, Republican Party, but uh, within our own ranks? Well, just to be clear, there's two kinds of corruption. There's the kind that's legal or people end up in handcuffs, illegal and people end up in handcuffs. And then there's the kind that is legal, but that everybody knows is problematic, or at least everybody who's not in politics themselves um, who might want to defend it. And so what, what I think the, the most important thing is for those of for I mean, if you care about our country and if you care about our democracy, it's not enough to just agree with your candidate on a few issues. You actually have to say, hey, we're going to we're going to primary you if you're not also taking on some of the structural problems in our society. I think the way to not just beat Donald Trump in 2020 or win a. Uh, win a race in uh, 2018, but to deeply win back uh, our country is that Democratic Party, in order to win, needs to be um, separate itself from the Wall Street financiers, separate itself from the, the big corporate interests, and return to the best part of its history, uh, which is fighting for the little guy against the big, uh, against the billionaires and big guys. That's not, that's not as against opposing Donald Trump. That's an alternate vision. That's a vision of true flourishing. All right, well, thank you, Ms. Chitao. Thank you. Thank you.